my name is Janet Beal. I'm one of, the, one of the contributors to the book Social Ecology and Social Change, which I highly recommend. I think it's the first really straightforward anthology of social ecology by multiple contributors that has ever existed. There have been a couple of earlier attempts which were, which were actually misfires. There was an early one by John Clark that was full of mystical and deep ecology articles at a time when Murray was busy contesting those tendencies in the ecology movement. And then there was another, a second one a few years later called Social Ecology After Bookchin, which actually um, was part of a, 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 in many ways, a hostile project towards social ecology by some eco-socialists, so jockeying for turf in the ecology movement. So this is the first one that's really straightforward and it's to the point, and it is everything that it represents itself to be of a social ecology anthology. So I congratulate New Compass for this wonderful accomplishment after so many years. It's really a true delight to see it appear. Well, my essay is about um, the built environment, the American built environment as an ecological challenge, which it certainly is. Um, unfortunately, after the um, Second World War, the wealthiest country in the history of the planet devoted most of its resources to building an environment that is entirely unsustainable. It kept building out. It built roads. It was built around the automobile as a, uh, as a way to, as, in, as individual form of transportation. And what it did was create, um, at the time, an environment of, of suburbs that, um, have, uh, that turn out to be exactly the opposite of what we need for a sustainable cities. We need Cities that are sustainable need to be dense, they need to be walkable, they need to have destinations, meaningful destinations that are in walking distance or between neighborhoods in, and between cities using public transportation. And, and this, this, uh, the, the suburban environment that, that was created in the post-war era is now, it's now falling apart, it needs to be maintained, and cities just can't afford it. It's, re it's a real, in a way, a, a, a contradiction in anti-ecological capitalism <laughs> that, that, these, that, these, um, that this environment is basically crumbling now. And what we're trying to do is um, build a, a, concentrate on building an ecological city, not just in terms of green spaces, which obviously should be there, um, bike paths, um, for reforestation, urban farms, all this is very important. But we need to bring in this discourse that's been abroad now in urban planning for about the past 20 years of building sustainable, dense cities. You know, cities used to be thought of as anti-ecological, as it was the wilderness that was the ecological part, the rural part that, that environmentalists were concerned about. And Bookchin, of course, was always very critical of this because he talked about ecology as a, as a social phenomenon, and he, he started talking about the ci cities as having, really looking to the cities as ecologically important, actually long before um, the, the new urbanism began to do so. In here, urbanism, the new urbanism and books and social ecology are actually, I think, converging, um, and finally catching up, and I, would, uh, I think it's very important for uh, social ecologists to get involved in urban planning, um, when, there's, when things come before planning commissions, with proposals for developments, we need to emphasize uh, um, dense cities. We need to emphasize um, yeah, neighborhoods, the reconstruction of viable neighborhoods. We need to emphasize public transportation. Um, these, have, these, have, these, have, these are very clearly now issues for the environment.